coal is on the way out and renewable energy is fast replacing fossil fuels as a source of energy. We discussed this in some of our previous videos. Please do check them out. Now, renewable energy is growing so fast and this phenomenal growth has two major challenges. One is financing, the other is dealing with issues of grid stability. In this video, we will talk about financing and in a subsequent video, we will talk about what can be done about grid stability. And now, there are many estimates of how much money you need to decarbonize India's electricity sector. In December 2021, at the Glasgow Climate Talks, at COP26, Prime Minister Modi famously said that India would need a trillion dollars to meet its international commitments on climate action. Like this, there are many other estimates as well. The broad message is very simple. The money required for building the planned quantum of renewable energy is very, very large. You need a hell of a lot of money to do this. Now, turn this around. A mirror image of this message is that the traditional ways of financing will just not do. There is plenty of money lying in different pockets waiting for good investment opportunities. Just to give you an example, in 2021, the global pension funds had financial assets of $57 trillion. Global insurance sector had about $42 trillion. And the world's sovereign wealth funds, that is wealth funds, funds of each individual country, they had cumulatively about another $10 trillion. If you put add up all together, you get about $100 trillion. The point I'm trying to make is there's a lot of money lying around. How to get them to invest in the Indian renewable energy sector? That is the big question facing us. These institutional investors are very, very picky about where they put their money and rightly so because they are all dealing with other people's money. They look at country risk, exchange risk and a whole lot of other risks before investing. So, what you need now is some innovation in financing. We are going to need innovative financial structures to attract these global institutional funds. Now, let us look at some of these innovative financial structures. One is a straight sovereign guarantee. If the government of India can stand guarantee for the repayment of a loan, then the lenders would not only be interested in lending, but also would lower the interest rates. But a government guarantee is fraught with difficulties. A slight variation of government guarantee is the government borrows from the market and on lends to renewable energy projects. This can work and guess what? It has. As some of you may remember, on January 25 and February 9 of 2023, the government did raise somewhere around $4 billion at slightly lower interest rates too under a framework for sovereign green bond issuance of the government of India, a green finance working committee has been set up to select public sector projects for green financing, which means the government borrows from the market and lends to these projects that are put up by public sector. Well, the government could do a lot more of this. When the government borrows, it is at a cheaper rate because Nobody expects the government of India to default and consequently the interest rates will come down and the lower interest rate will benefit the industry. Now let us come to yet another way the government can help. In mid-May 2023, the International Renewable Energy Agency, or IRENA, produced a report titled Low-Cost Finance for Energy Transition for the Consideration of G20 Countries. Among the many suggestions the report makes is for setting up of an exchange rate insurance system. If exchange rate risk is assumed by an insurer, it would help lower costs of finance. Well, that's an idea worth trying, although one is not sure if it will work favorably if costs of insurance itself is factored in. But that's another financial structure. And then, Moving beyond government-supported finance, we look at an emerging thing called blended finance, which is increasingly being talked about. You may remember 
that in the G20 meeting in Indonesia last year, the meeting when Indonesia handed over the G20 presidency to India, the group adopted what it called G20 principles to scale up blended finance in developing countries. What is blended finance? Blended finance is a way of structuring financing. It essentially involves making use of social, philanthropic or concessional finance to leverage conventional finance. This is done by de-risking a project. You use the social finance and philanthropic money to de-risk a project. Once the project is de-risked, you can attract a lot more of conventional finance. For example, the IRINA report that I just mentioned notes that the blended finance could take for what it calls a portfolio approach, which in simpler terms means aggregating a lot of projects. You can aggregate several wind and solar projects and make one loan to all of them. This approach is particularly useful for projects like rooftop solar. Blended finance can be used for giving loan guarantees. Under this, a fund essentially stands guarantee for non-repayment of a loan, say, the, for the first three months, or the second six months, or whatever, whichever way it is structured. So if the lender is not paid, this fund will pay the lender on behalf of the borrower. Recently, the phrase first loss default guarantee has been appearing a lot in the newspapers in the context of the Reserve Bank of India evolving norms for digital lending. You all may have read it. That is a loan guarantee. Loan guarantee schemes, by the way, are nothing new in India. To, just to give you an example, the Credit Guarantee Fund Trust for micro and small enterprises. It has been running several loan guarantee products for about 22, 23 years. And in 2020, 21, it stood guarantee for loans worth something like 56,000 crores. Blended finance can be used to set up a similar guarantee fund which can leverage conventional capital. Of course, there is a flip side to it. Blended finance is usually given, usually made available to only those projects that cannot happen without the support of blended finance. But our renewable energy projects, wind and solar projects don't fall in that category really. They can stand on their own. Still, there is no reason why this blended finance can be brought into play now. As mentioned earlier, the good news is that the need to bring in financial innovations to fund renewable projects, that narrative has entered the mainstream. Everybody is talking about it and that is a fountain of hope. For more videos on India's green transition journey, please do subscribe.